Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1447. Hey, if you want to download this Excel workbook file, either the start file or finish file so you can follow along, click on the link below the video. Hey, we've been doing a bunch of videos lately with the same two data sets. But in this video, 1447, we want to see how to use DAX formulas and a data model pivot table to count and list stores that customers have visited. Now here's all the customers, and here's all the transactions. We have a customer number that's linked in a relationship over in the data model, so we can pick out the number of stores that each customer has visited. Now we're simply going to create this pivot table, drag customer into the row area, and then we want to use distinct count to count the number of stores each customer visited, and then use concatenate x to join and list all the stores that each customer visited. Now I'm going to drag this over to the side. Let's go look at our data model. We've already imported transaction. Here's the customer and the store. These are all the transactions. So from store, there's a one-to-many relationship, and customer, one-to-many. There could be many customers, but only one unique customer in the first column on this table. Same over here, there's only three stores, but of course, the store could be listed many times. Now let's go back over to Excel. I'm going to start my pivot table. I'm going to click in a cell, insert pivot table, or the keyboard Alt and V. Now it knows that there's a data model, so the default is use this workbook's data model. That makes it a data model pivot table. I'm going to put it on L9, click OK. Now I want to go over to our table customer and drag customer name down to rows. Now we could go to F transactions and drag store down here and then right click and inside the pivot table access the distinct count function, but that would build an implicit measure. And implicit measures are all sorts of trouble. I have a whole video on why you always want to go create your own DAX measure rather than creating implicit measures. That means just dragging and dropping down here. Let's go back over to the data model. Go to data view. We're in the F transaction. I'm going to build the DAX measure here. It'll show up in the field list under F transaction. I'm going to start typing. That shoots me up to the formula bar. Count stores visited. Colon equal sign. Everything before the colon equal sign will be the name in the field list. Everything after is the formula. DI, there's distinct. We want distinct count. Now, because there's a relationship, I can simply say FT and then down arrow to F transaction store. Because there's a relationship between customer and the transaction table, the pivot table has the single customer name. That'll filter the F transaction table just down to that particular customer. And distinct count will count how many stores there are for each customer. Enter. Alt-Tab. Now I can simply come over to F transaction. And there it is. There's our F of X icon. We can click and drag. And there's our count. Now we want to list with our pivot table formula as we copy down for each customer the actual stores. Alt-Tab. Come down right below and type list of stores, colon, equal sign. And we're going to use the concatenate x function. x functions are iterative functions. We're allowed to iterate over a table and make a calculation for each row. For us, we want to use the values function. Values gives us a unique list. And if we type FT and down arrow to store, as we copy down in the pivot table for each customer, F store again will be filtered down. But instead of this time counting like distinct count, values will grab the distinct values, comma. Now, the expression is simply going to be, please give me the actual column of values. So FT down arrow to store, and then comma, the delimiter, double quote, comma, space, and double quote. What it will do is there's the unique list filtered down. This says, please give me the list and put a comma and a space between each. Close parentheses. 
Enter. And there we go. Alt-Tab to go back over. If I click and drag, look at that. Now we get a funny result down in the bottom. That may be OK. Three and the list there, that simply means there's only three stores for the grand total. And there they are. If you wanted to get rid of those in the grand total, Alt-Tab, we can before each one say if has one value, and we'll say, hey, D customer, customer column, tab. Do you have just one value? If that comes out true, comma, then please run the formula. Otherwise, and we leave the third argument out in if, and it will put a blank. Close parentheses and Enter. Now I'm going to cheat. I'm going to copy this exact same thing. Control C, Escape. Click in the formula below, right after the equal sign, Control V. Come to the end, close parentheses, and Enter. And there we go. It doesn't change anything up here, but at the bottom, it shows nothing. All right, so that was a little quick video about how to use distinct count and then how to use concatenate X and values to list each store that the customer visited. All right, we'll see you next video.